Hi, today now we want to look at specifically some different coaching styles and how to do some of that research, uh, some quality research with it. First, we're going to look at, uh, I'm going to do a comparison of two wrestling coaches with completely different styles, but arguably uh, the two most successful coaches in the collegiate game. And on a personal level, growing up in Iowa, uh, in Illinois, Midwest, and then coming here to Penn State, I just love wrestling. So it's a, I think it's a, it's a great model here to look at. Secondly, we want to look at the ways to do some quality research, and hopefully this is role modeling that a little bit too. And then some desirable qualities of any coach, regardless of the style. And lastly, just some reminders and tips on doing that role model research you need to do of leaders for um, the course. So let's get started. Like I said, there's different ways to be completely successful um, and with different styles, approaches, and philosophy. It's very important in this uh, course when you design your portfolio, you don't try to fit some of the examples we're giving here from the lectures. You design your own style, your own that fits your personality and be the coach or the leader you want to be. Just make sure you reference and support it and give the illustrations and you've met all the expectations for assessment. So one of the things I want you to do here is we're going to compare Tom Brands, which is the head wrestling coach at the University of Iowa, and then Cale Sanderson, who's the head wrestling coach here at Penn State. Uh, I want you to, when you're looking at the videos and the information we give here, we're going to give you some interviews, two of each. It kind of gives you an inside view of their personalities and their coaching styles. I want you to take notes on what you can learn from each of them, because they're both, regardless of your style, there's something you can learn that you can apply, hopefully, to your own leadership style, whether it's what you think is good or what you think is bad. Okay. Uh, so again, define the style, look at strengths and weaknesses. So first off, uh, coaching style number one, Tom Brands, if you're not familiar with him, uh, he's been the head wrestling coach now at Iowa for 13 years. Just again, click on his bio and you can do that with any of these coaches at the collegiate ranks. It's really easy and it's kind of fun to know where they came from, who they worked under. But what makes Tom interesting is he wrestled at Iowa, um, was a great wrestler there, which we'll highlight. He's from a small town in western Iowa, and then uh, was an assistant for 12 years. Went off to Virginia Tech for a little while to get some head coaching, but then when Dan Gable, who was the legend coach he played for, retired, he came and replaced him. Uh, since he's been there, he's had three NCAA titles, four Big Ten titles. You can see his uh, uh, dual meet percentage is uh, right at 90, 900. Um, he himself was a four-time All-American and three-time national champ. He had a gold medal uh, at the 96 Olympics. Um, as I said before, if you're not familiar with wrestling at all, he wrestled for a legendary coach named Dan Gable. Go look at his bio, but some interesting pieces there. And this is when I was growing up in the state um, he won nine consecutive NCAA wrestling titles. Uh, he won 25 Big Ten titles. And then as a wrestler, his high school and university career, he lost one match, which uniquely was his very last match of his college career. He went on then and uh, won a gold medal and had an international a career that's uh, unmatched. So this is kind of his background, where he came from. And you'll see it's a very fiery style. So. Now with the uh, uh, video, go ahead and pause and go look. This first one is only four minutes, but it's great. They actually use it on their uh, website at the, for athletics with the wrestling program. And it talks about um, the Iowa way. Um, again, Gable was a very physical wrestler, very fit wrestler in tacking, and that's Brand's kind of style. And you'll see it'll come out in just the interviews. The second one then, you can click on the video, and I like this because it shows Brands then and his consistency in his style. This was after a, a dual win after a winter break where they just demolished Ohio State and uh, still very aggressive, very fiery in addressing his team's needs and goals and direction. So pause and go through those. They're only about four minutes each of them, but gives you a good idea. Write down some notes of strengths, weaknesses, likes, dislikes when you're doing that. Next one then uh, is Coach Sanderson Kale right here from uh, Penn State. 
again, he's just finished his ninth year. The bio's there, it's pretty extensive because it's pretty impressive. Uh, but he was won seven NCAA titles in those in that nine year span, five Big Ten titles. Again, it's interesting, the winning percentage is right at uh, equal to Iowa there. He was a four time All American uh, and then four time national champ. Uh, and he's the only wrestler in the history of the NCAA that was named the outstanding wrestler for the NCAA all four years. He also won a gold medal in the Olympics in 2004. Uh, his NCAA record was undefeated. Uh, there are several other wrestlers that have done it, but none of them um, with that many matches and that, that uh, level. It's interesting, again, Gable, where Brands got his uh, style from, uh, lost only on his last match. So there's this unique comparison. Also, uh, if you don't know this, Kale wrestled at Iowa State, which is the rival of Iowa. So there's this unique connection of not only the state, but Dan Gable with win losses and career as a wrestler themselves. With Kale here, um, if you don't know anything about him, um, he's a man of few words, especially when he's doing interviews. Uh, um, has a different mindset, different personality, and that'll come out. He talks about here, it's just about a 30 second video piece on the website there, but favorite thing of being a D1 wrestling coach. And then the second one, you want to go ahead and click on this. This is uh, after now a dual loss um, versus Iowa, which has gotten to be the biggest dual attendance-wise. 16,000 fans here in 2015. Um, but you see how he approaches after a, a disappointing loss. You need to start the video at uh, the 940 point, and you can end it around 1118, 1120. Gives you a good uh, feel for how he communicates. Okay. And again, write down strengths, weaknesses, likes, dislikes as you're watching the video. Some desirable qualities of all leaders right now, especially in today's age, is what's called transparent realism. It's again, now you don't have to be this tough person and show no emotion. It's more about being able to show your human qualities, but obviously uh, tempering that on the two ends. Again, the importance of having empathy for your individual athletes and not just focus on the team all the time. Be able to show concern or you care about them and their needs. This is the transparent realism though, is finding a ways to be professional but express your anger, but also your sour and happiness, being able to show all your human qualities. Uh, the key here is, you probably need to look at a way to find balance in everything, regardless of your personality. That's where you need to identify what your strengths and your weaknesses are so you can be proactive there. And again, the example is this, if you're a person that doesn't like to, to let up, you're a real focused individual uh, for practice, for example, uh, maybe it's good to be able to laugh when something actually funny happens and that shows some realism to your athletes. Last, just one more review and pointers for when you start to look at your leader role model research and start to develop your own style, uh, make sure you do your research. Whoever you pick as a leader, go back and find their complete bio, their history. I tried to give the example of Brands and Sanderson, the uniqueness of the Iowa connection, the Gable connection. If you go all the way back, you'll see that. And it, finds an interesting twist. You'll pick up something or uncover a stone that can real, reveal a lot to you. Again, you need to know who they worked under and that has an impact. As you can see with Brands, he's pretty much uh, required to coach the similar style of uh, Gable to be the head coach at Iowa. If you don't know, there was actually another coach hired between him and Brands after Gable's retirement who was not of that same fiery personality and he was forced out as much for his personality uh, and is not, not so much for his win-loss record. Um, you need to look at the variety of styles and research the different ones so you can better understand uh, why you're doing what you do and we'll talk about you have to do that in an assignment anyway. Again, just determine strengths. There's always strengths, there's always weaknesses in every style. It's not one or the other. Most important thing then, go apply what you've learned and put it into your own leadership style. Make sure you're being yourself. 
and it's got to fit your personality. If it doesn't, then it's probably not something you, you can use. Okay, it won't be real when you get into the heat of the battle, so to speak. So just determine what type of leader you want to be and who you want to project to your athletes and to people outside of your program. Good luck.